Okay, welcome back everyone. So, the last time we talked about the span of a list of vectors. So remember, the span of v1, v2, blah, 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 vk is those vectors which can be written as some linear combination, a1 times v1 plus dot, 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 plus ak times vk of the vectors. Now, it might be that the same vector could be written in many ways as the linear combination of a list of vectors. So for example, if we have a two-dimensional plane, x plus y plus z equals zero in three-dimensional space, that plane is the span of the vectors one, negative one, zero, zero, one, negative one, and negative one, zero, negative one. And the vector one, two, minus three, that's in the plane x plus y plus z equals zero, it is a linear combination of these vectors and in many different ways. So it's the first vector plus three times the second vector, but it's also two times the first vector plus four times the second vector plus the third vector and many other formulas. And you can go and check the arithmetic here. And geometrically, the basic reason this happened is we've got a two-dimensional plane in three-dimensional space. We've got three vectors in that two-dimensional plane and they all point out in uh, equal directions like this, and there's a linear relationship between the vectors. The linear relationship is that their sum is zero. So we can take any expression for our vector v, like this first one, which is first vector plus three times second vector, and add multiples of this relationship to it and get other expressions for the same vector. So when we have a linear relationship, like this one on this past slide, we say that the vectors are linearly dependent. So the definition is that a collection of vectors is linearly dependent if their coefficients, not all of which are zero, such that c1, v1, plus dot, 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 plus ck, vk is zero. And the opposite of linearly dependent is linearly independent. Uh, of course, if the c's are all zero, then, yeah, and of course, this expression here does add up to zero, but the definition of linearly dependent is that there is some other relationship besides that obvious one, and linearly independent means not linearly dependent. Okay, so let V be the subspace spanned by V1 through Vk. If the Vs are linearly dependent, then any vector in W will be written in will be expressible in many different ways as a linear combination of the Vs. Because if we take any expression for W, like this expression here, and we have some linear relationship between the Vs, then we can just add T times the zero vector to our formula here and get another expression for W. And so when vectors are linearly dependent, there are many different ways to write other vectors as linear combinations of them. On the other hand, I claim that if my vectors are linearly independent, then there's only one way to write any given vector w as a linear combination of the v's. So let's see why. So suppose to the contrary that there were two ways to write w as a linear combination of v1 through vk both a1, v1, plus dot, 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 plus a, k, v, k, and b1, v1, plus dot, 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 plus b, k, v, k. Well, then we could subtract these from each other, and we'd get a1 minus b1, v1, plus dot, 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 plus a, k minus b, k, v, k, equals zero. And so this would be a linear relationship between the v's. And if the a's were not just the same thing as the b's, if these were two genuinely different expressions, then these coefficients would not be zero. Okay, so vectors are linearly dependent if there are many different ways to write vectors in their span as combinations of them. And vectors are linearly independent if there is only one way, if every vector in the span has a unique expression as a linear combination of these vectors. So linearly independent vectors are good because they give you an unambiguous way to write everything in the span. Now, how do we test whether a set of vectors is linearly dependent? Well, we haul out that workhorse of an algorithm that we use over and over again, we solve linear equations. 
So let's say we have a list of vectors, v1, v2, blah, 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 vk. I'm going to organize them as the columns of a matrix, like I've done over here. Then a linear relationship between these vectors, c1, v1, plus blah, 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 ck, vk equals zero, is exactly saying that the vector c1, c2, blah, 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 ck is in the kernel of this matrix. So our vectors are linearly dependent if and only if our matrix has a kernel. Let's see an example. So here are three vectors, and we'll see if they are linearly dependent. Here's our matrix. Here's row reduction. I'm not writing out the steps of row reduction anymore, but you can run re row reduction, and here's the row reduced form. And we see there are two pivot columns. Here are the pivots. And one free column. So there's the free column. And so oh, there's going to be a kernel. And we compute the kernel is spanned by the vector negative 4, 1, 1. And sure enough, we have a linear dependency between these vectors, negative 4 times the first vector plus 1 times the second vector plus 1 times the third vector is 0. OK, that's it for today's lecture. <clears throat> nice talking to you.